Hello everyone, I am Sophia Ring, SP Saturn the 7th, and you are watching Anime Egotists. Enjoy! And welcome back to the Anime Egotists, where if you had the choice to hang out with us, you'd rather go to the Shadow Realm. For a punishment. Yeah, it, we're, and not like the Impractical Joker style punishment where you can laugh at the people involved, but just kind of like the, oh god, this is what we're dealing with? This is what we have to go through? All right. My name's Alex, and I would make a terrible lawyer to some of my favorite anime characters. Like, I can't excuse some of the stuff they've done. Yeah, it can be get pretty bad, especially when heroes go, like, crazy. <laughs> yeah. But today we're here to discuss characters we would be friends with, might make good roommates. We're kind of going based on how we became friends, so... Yeah, when we basically got stuck with each other, we're like, well, everybody else is terrible, so let's go with this. It's but basically, you chose, if I remember correctly, you chose to move in with us. Uh, I chose to move in with the devil I knew, which was Jabari, but then I got stuck with you and the other moron, so once again, but worst decision of my life. Well, you know, besides the whole mass media major thing. But regardless, these are the characters who we think would make a decent set of people to hang around. Obviously not all of them together, despite that would actually be kind of a cool, cool thing to think about. But, but just the characters that we feel like we would like to hang out with. The characters who, it's like, you know, I could have worse people to hang out with. Exactly. Uh, whether it's... We, we, a lot of mine I did based on personality. I didn't do it based on, like, powers that they might have. It's, oh, me either. So it's stuff that they could bring to the relationship kind of thing if we became roommates or were close friends. That's right. And before we and before we begin, I just want to say, for my personal taste, Ace, I understand that most of these characters probably wouldn't actually want to be my friend. And this is just, I mean, like, maybe? I, I guarantee I have a better chance than Richard does. But regardless... These are the characters that we just think, you know, we'd like to hang out with them. Whether they want to or not is not our business. Exactly. Anyways, do you want to start us off? Sure, I'll go first. So, my first character is Sanji from One Piece. I knew he was going to be <laughs> on your list. One, he seems to be able to cook anything, like, you, you could have, like, a half empty thing of mustard and bread and he'd make a meal that tasted like meat it just seems like he'd be able to do anything with food so it'd be great to have a, someone who's a good friend who can cook like that i thought about putting a uh, someone from food wars on the list but after much consideration and the fact that i don't want to get naked all the time i think or orgasm over my food i kind of went with this because it seems like he can make really good food out of almost nothing. <sighs> yeah, I've always liked Sanji from the very little I've seen, even back when he had that weird accent and the four kids version, and I had no idea what he was doing. Hey, the one issue I do have is let's say let's say the One Piece crew was around. Let's say it's like, oh hey, I brought my friends to come over. Is that cool? You're like, yeah, that's fine. You'd have to be careful about what you ate specifically. Because I remember an episode of One Piece where he made a meal for everybody, but he made like a heart-shaped thing for Nami, and then Usopp ended up eating it. He's like, oh, thanks, Ink Sanji. He's like, yeah, th no problem, Usopp. You're definitely the person I made that for. So I'd have to work with him on that. But overall, I really like Sanji. He's a good guy. Yeah, and besides just his cooking, he's, he is a really nice guy. So I could, uh, for the most part, as long as I don't have green hair, I think I could get along with him. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know who I support in that war of Sanji versus Zoro. It's, it's, it's a tough call because I like both of them. Yeah, but I, I just, I think Sanji would just make a better roommate. Zoro seems to be off on his own all the time. True, but Zoro works out like crazy, so I could get jacked. So it could, it might work out for me. Yeah, but you'd have to be able to lift weights with your mouth. Okay. <laughs> All right, so what's your first one? All right, and of course, I co sign. My first, the first person I pick, Kenshiro from Fists of the North Star. Okay. All right, I'm not going to go into the realm of, oh, well, man. For, first of all, I would just feel good about it because I would pull him out of his super depressed world into a even world that's actually still super depressing. 
But regardless, in all honesty, he's just somebody who, as tough as he look, looks, he is, like, a really nice guy and everything. He Plus, he could help with training, he could help you get in shape and all this other sorts of stuff. Plus, it, despite being, like, a big manly man and everything, he's not one of those idiots out there who thinks men can't cry or stuff like that. So, he's a very supportive person to have. Not to mention, he's very protective of his friends, he's wise. Plus, I, I just want, plus, if I ever learned the ability to do half of his attacks, he would he could stop me from going to the dark side, because I would end up doing that. But Kenshiro, he's cool, cool and he, he's not much of a complainer, if anything. If anything, he might see as, wow, you took all the time to do all this stuff. Uh, the minorest of inconveniences doesn't really affect me, considering everything he's been through. But Kenshiro, for sure. I can co-sign onto that one. Um, yeah, plus if you have any issues, he can take care of it for you real easily. <laughs> yeah, and he, plus he also likes animals, so that helps. Or animals like him. I don't remember which one it is specifically. It could be both. All right. But yeah, as I said, I'll co-sign onto that one. Yeah, I don't know how much of Fifths of the North Star that you know, but I just figured Ken, he's somebody we haven't talked about. I, I've seen a few episodes here and there. I don't think I've seen anything kind of in order, so I don't know it very well i'm telling you any anime that you're thinking about watching just watch it all in out just watch every episode in alphabetical order just do that and you'll be fine well i mean i've done that before but it really it's really weird because characters seem to come back to life and then die again and yeah uh, people are remembered before they've even appeared for the first time yeah that's another list we could do anime that we just haven't given a chance yet that we need to watch somebody recommended that in the comments so we i think that we have to give it a chance yeah I've, I've, I've got a good list for that already all right so kind of in the same starting idea though of someone who would help me get jacked it's uh ijiro kirishima from my hero academia oh, he's boy. Bakugo's, I guess, best friend in the series. But Bakugo has friends? This is the closest thing he has to it. <laughs> okay. But, I mean, he really comes from... He, he's really motivated to just improve himself, and I could see him being a great gym partner for those reasons. Because, um, uh, I mean, they've even... Like, his story is that his power, which is he can make himself hard... But, <sighs> <laughs> I got a, I know a couple of friends who can do that already. That's not a superpower. He, with his power, he it wasn't great. It just kind of it made his skin thicker, pretty much. That's all it did at first. But he trained it up and made himself stronger. And he does a lot of physical activity to make himself stronger. So I can see him being a really good gym partner. He's always motivated to help people. He's always really nice to everybody. So, and he's friends with the screaming maniac. He's like the one person who can kind of control him, but he's also and the one person that uh, Bakugo will listen to. Hmm, okay, that's. I guess I just have to co-sign. I, I re like my hero will not, probably not be on that list because I just have no, I just have no interest in it. Besides the fanfic I've talked about with you, with you with one of the recent chapters, but this is a PG podcast, so well, PG thirteen podcast, so I have to leave it at that. Maybe that's come on. Everybody knows that. <laughs> no, no. PG PG thirteen. PG with certain guests and then R whenever Nathan or Jay show up because they just decide, no, just for, forget about what they asked for. But Hiroshima, sure, fine. I don't really have anything else. Even with the small amount of my hero academia characters, I do know he's not really one of them. Alright. Your next one? Oh boy. My next one. This is not good. Alright. Kosaki Onodera from Nisekoi. <sighs> I don't... I want, I want to eliminate a perception really quick. I do not hate Nisekoi. I, I'd say I like it more than I dislike it, but it is a frustrating show to sit through. That being said, Kosaki Onodera, not her sister, her sister is awful, is one of the nicest people I've ever seen watching an anime. She's kind, she's always willing to help people, She's not, and she's not even conceited about it. If anything, she's very self-conscious. So I'd like to think with me and maybe a couple of other people, we'd be able to help bring each other out of our, like, I guess, phases of awkwardness and 
She's also really, really good at not necessarily cooking sweets, but like decorating them. And I've always wanted to learn how to decorate more of the sweets and the stuff I make. Even though when she gets depressed, it looks terrible, but it tastes amazing. So I guess it's a pick your poison kind of thing. But her, mo her mom's an amazing chef or cook or whatever. Her sister, her sister's the worst, I'm not gonna lie, that's an L, but like I said, she's a kind person, she's always willing to help people, she's willing to make sacrifices for herself, despite the fact that I would say, look, you're allowed to be, it's not selfish if you're just doing it, if you're not trying to hurt somebody, sometimes it's just, it's just you taking care of yourself, but overall, I just think we, everybody would just be able to bring the best out of each other if Ono Dara was around, because she really just knows how to do that. And sometimes you just want a nice person to hang out with. Yeah, I mean, it sounds really nice and helpful with everything. And I mean, everybody I know pretty much has a sweet tooth. So that would be always awesome to have someone who's really good at uh, baking for, uh, to help you out with that sort of thing. Yeah, just imagine the next time we, if we ever meet up for like the Royal Rumble or WrestleMania, just imagine we just bring a giant cake and it looks amazing. Like those old uh, ones that you used to get, I think at like Walmart or something that uh, like it actually looks like John Cena or something. Exactly. And then John Cena <laughs> pops out of the cake. That's a, that's a whole other topic for another day. But Onodera, she's nice. She's good with sweets. And I would tell her, hey, hey, Onodera, look, look, I respect you for like being calm and collected and everything. But go get your man. Go. Go. You got this. It's screw screw what the original manga uh, ending was. We're, this is this is our manga. Who cares? I don't think you'd have a good relationship with her. It push her to be come out of her shell a little bit more. Yeah, of course. Some because believe it or not, sometimes you just like nice people. So my next one is kind of the opposite. Like they, they're not exactly the nicest person. But there's one specific reason I think I would get along with them. Okay. And that's Kiba Inazuka from Naruto. I love, I'm, it's, we, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Just, his relationship with people is really weird. He either is very nice and kind to you, kind of like how he is with his teammates, with Hinata, Shino, and uh, Kurenai. But then, Everybody else, like the rest of the uh, Konoha 11 or 12 or 13, however many there are now, he's more of a jerk to the rest of them. But just his, I, my favorite animals are dogs. So I could get so along with him. I I would be the person who we'd, we'd be meeting up. I'd give him, I'd constantly be giving Akamaru treats. And he would be like, you're going to make him fat. I mean, with how often they work out and, like, go on walks, which involve jumping through forests and everything, I think it would work out pretty well. But I'm all, I am I can agree with that. I've always liked Kiba. I feel like I was one of the few people who liked Kiba from the very beginning because everybody either hated him because either, A, he was mean to Naruto, even though he was the better fighter in the tuning exams. We, we both, we've talked about that before. Or B, it was a situation where it's like, you know, I really hate him because he has a crush on Hinata and he's ruining that for Naruto. I'm like, where is this coming from? Where are you getting this implication that they like each other? If anything, he was very, very supportive. Like, he and Shino were very, like, go for it. We're proud of you, but go for it. But, I, like I said, I love dogs. They're great. Hey, and Kiba, I just feel like Kiba and all of us and Kiba would really get along. Yeah, he, he kind of matches the rest, like, a good fit into our group. He would get along. He'd he'd be able to take the roasting and give it back like like we all do to each other, so. Yeah, overall, but I have to say, you say that, but in my, but like I said before, I personally think that if we're going to add any members to our group, we should start kicking some out, too. Yeah, again, we'll have to discuss that. It Can, can, can it please be me? Can it please be me? <laughs> no, you're too close to the center of the organization. Ah, uh, why? <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, I really like Kiba. Hopefully he brings Shino along, because I I would like to think that I would not ignore Shino. Yeah, I think that would work well. And he and Jabari could treat uh, teaching secrets. That's correct. Anyways, my next character? <laughs> Go right ahead. All right. 
You remember how before we started recording how I said I had somebody on this list from a show I didn't even like? Yep. Alright, well, sadly that time that person's time has come, but she carried she was one of the people who carried this show. Saori Makishima from Saori Makishima from Ore no Emoto. <sighs> Look, she once like on Adara, she's a very nice person, but overall she's also just incredibly quirky. Like, like she has this animated personality about her, and she's always trying to get people to be like, like, who care who cares if they like anime? Let's talk about it. But she's also one of those people who's like, just because you like something different doesn't necessarily mean in your bat you're a bad person. Or it just means like we can talk about it, we can express it with each other. But she's also not one of those people who's like, okay, you have to watch what I'm watching because I have so many friends who are trying to recommend stuff to me in a forceful way. And I'm going to be honest, it's annoying. But she's just like, watch it if you want. I don't care. But but she also has moments where she's like super shy. And I'd like to think that a couple of people could bring her out of her shell. She really likes Gundam. So her and Reese would get along fantastically. But she's just a good, she's a good leader of an otaku group. So she, like I said, she loves anime. She's a nice person. She's rich, so that helps a bit. But overall, she's just a kind, funny person to be around. So she, she, she was like the second best character on that show. So that's kind of why I had to put her on. The second best out of like three good characters. So I felt like I had to send her some love. I don't know the show well enough, so I... We'll just kind of co-sign on your description, but uh, yeah, I mean, with what all of us watch, and we all, our entire friend group kind of watches anime and discusses different things about it, so it sounds like she would get along just fine. That is correct. All right, so we think we each have one more than honorable mentions? Yes. All right, so... This is one that uh, that I have that we haven't discussed. This is actually a relatively new anime. It's actually very popular now. It's uh, Wakana Gojo from My Dress Up Darling. Uh, I, I This is one of those shows that I'm not sure I want to give a chance, but continue. So, I just, something with our group is that we do like to accept other people for, especially when they like something that they just, they like doing. His big thing is he makes the um, classic style Japanese dolls. Uh, he, his grandfather ran a shop. He makes them, uh, he kind of learned from his grandfather. And then uh, the whole story is that he's coming out of his shell uh, thanks to cosplay with this, uh, with the main girl in the series. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Right so he, is he the main character or at least the main guy in the show? He's the main guy. Okay, all right. And I have an idea of who you're talking about. So I just, I like someone, I like people who follow their dreams regardless of what other people think. I mean, that that's literally in the first episode, the people, uh, when he's saying he's starting to learn how to make the dolls to one of his friends in like elementary school, they say, well, we can't be friends. That You're not allowed to like this sort of thing. You're weird. I don't, I'm not friends with you anymore. And they literally leave. It's like, oh, he likes doing this. It's a traditional thing in Japan that they that people do. So it, it's like, I just, I would want to be friends with him just to like help him be out of his shell and understand that people will accept you for what you like to do. Yeah, if anything, he might be the best member of our group because the rest of us are just disasters. But but I can co-sign onto that. I, I, I don't need you to give me a straight up review for this show so far. But so far, how is it? Because people have been telling me it's great, but there's something about it that puts me off. I enjoy it. Um, it's an interesting look into, I guess, Japanese cosplay. I, I and I, I don't know how if it's different than how. Like people here in the U.S. do it or not, but just that, and it's about again. It's so far. It's a story about a guy coming out of his shell thanks to the help of a popular girl who's trying to do something in cosplay. So that's kind of 
a brief overview without spoiling any details. Okay, yeah. Ah, that's enough. That's another list we could do. Shows to shows that we think the other person that might like, but that that's that's going to take some doing though because yes. there are a lot of shows I watch that I know for a fact you would not like because I'm a bit of a weirdo. And there's I mean a ton I watched that just based on what you always talk about it's again we have different personalities when it comes to anime we've already kind of proven that with these lists yeah yeah and mine is better so we, we've both agreed on that but anyways i guess i can i guess i can co-sign based on the little to nothing i've seen of this show again i mean it's still premiering so you got time if you want to give it a shot i mean i feel like i always have time until like at the end my life's over but i know what you mean yeah so a anyways my next one go right ahead Okay, I'm a, I don't know how to pronounce the last name very well because I'm so used to hearing this character's first name. Sheil Alenkon from God Eater. Okay. Okay, so I've said before I wouldn't necessarily want to live in the God Eater universe because it just seems like a horrifying place to live. That being said, I love almost all of the characters, and Sheil was probably my favorite. She seems, when you first look at her, she seems super tough, but in actuality... She's very soft spoken, a little bit shy, and at the same but at the same time though, she does want to learn more. One of the characters even says, well, she was raised in a military background, so she had to suppress a lot of her emotions and everything. And when I heard that, I felt immediately bad. And this person's like, please be nice to her, and I'm like, got it. it but she's super smart, she's good with weaponry in case I needed that at some point. Maybe when the landlord comes for rent, she'll can deal with it. But in all honesty, she's a nice person. She's really good with caring for animals. Like, there's a little capybara uh, that she takes care of that's about the size of a guinea pig, and it grows to about the size of a kitchen table. And it's still alive and healthy. But like I said, good with weaponry, super smart, polite. It, it, a couple of awkward moments in, and some, admittedly, some dark humor when she says to your care, the main character, Wow, oh, I'd really like to understand you more. Maybe I should cut you open and research you. And then she's like, ha, just kidding. I'm like, ha, ha, we have to talk about that. But overall, she's just a really cool character. Probably my favorite. And, probably, and I just, I don't know. God Eater is something that I've always felt like does not get the love it deserves. But like I said, I really like S.H.I.E.L.D. She's a great character. Sounds really interesting. Again, I've only seen you play the games if... Uh back when we were roommates, so I don't really remember. I remember trying to watch the anime, and it's weird. It doesn't seem to hold up, I think, to the games by comparison. It's not as funny. It doesn't have as many funny moments as the game does. And the game, and say what you want about humor in shows like this, but it does try and help balance it out. That is very true, because, I mean, it's a very dark game, because it's pretty much the end of the world, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I, I would have said Gilbert, but his but his backstory is so sad, I don't think I'd be able to help. I'd be like, dude, I'm sorry. We can still be friends, but dude, dude I, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Dude, that, as long, and the, the weird, the only thing I wouldn't be able to help Sheil with is apparently she ends up with a crush on the main character. I'm like, I can't help you. Look at me. What do you expect? How do you expect me to help? I worked a miracle for Ono Dara. What do you, I can't, I can't do another one. Yeah. All right. So honorable mentions time. Yeah, we shouldn't drink at the same time for that. But yes, <laughs> honorable mentions time. All right. So this is one that we've talked about beforehand. Uh, well, we talked about this one a lot when you were watching this show. I've only seen a handful of, well, I've seen most episodes through you. And that's okay. Kusuo Psyche from Disaster Psyche Psyche K. <laughs> oh, I, I, mm, uh, I don't know. Continue. So for those of you who don't know, I used to be considered the normal guy by Alex in our group. Um, that's changed a lot, but I think if I was still considered, Psyche would just sort of follow me around wanting me to hang out and I'd just be like, why do you want to hang out with me? I'm boring. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised that you picked Psyche, primarily because, as I said before, if Psyche was around and he was reading our minds, I would find that very hard to trust us. Mm -hmm. us. I'd be like, okay, dude, 
I'm not going to try to screw you up. If anything, I'd rather be, I'm like you. I don't want to hang out with anybody. You all suck. And I would say that loud enough so everybody around me, even if they didn't know me, would hear it. But he does have, he does have moments, of course, where he does help people, where he does want to do the right thing. Plus, we could bribe him with sweets. It's like, hey, man, hey, man, um, I'm a, I need a raise at work. I need like two million a year. So just like, I'm not doing that. I'm like, all right, I guess I'll just have this chocolate cake for my, that's better. But he, I don't know. Psyche would be, yeah, a little, he would be difficult for me, but I don't think I would hate him as a friend. I think I would just be like, I have to manage my time with you. Yeah, again, I mainly put this one on the list because of uh, our previous description of myself, of him. He'd just be like, but I want to hang out with you. <sighs> well, there's a first time for everything, Richard. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> but over, I guess, I, guess I, I, I will tentatively co-sign on to Psyche. As long as he leaves most of his friends behind, I think we'll be good, except... I think I'd get along with most of them, but I would just be ripping on Teruhashi. I'm just like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're perfect pretty girl. Oh, you're acting like I'm interested, which I ain't. You know, that would probably make you, like, best friends with Psyche or something. He'd be like, please, so, uh, you want to hang out? I'm like, yeah, all right, let's go. But, yeah, I can, I, I can tentatively co-sign on to Psyche. All right, so your first honorable mention. Okay, Hideki Motosua from Chobits. Okay, just a oh, look. He he's a country bumpkin, so that might so based on some stuff I've said about living in the country in Spanish class, I might end up saying some stuff that might offend him. But on all honesty, he's just a really nice guy who's always trying to do the right thing and helping people above himself. Not to mention he, while not necessarily technologically advanced, he has a lot of friends around him that are technologically advanced. So I'd like to think some of it has rubbed off on him. Like, I'm not asking for my own personal robot or anything, which I would be, but I just think he might be able to pick up some technology in some sorts. It's, I just, and also, he's just, he's the ni- one of the nicest characters I've ever seen. He's just somebody who everybody points out, oh, I'm really happy that we're friends because you're such a nice guy. And then they make fun of him for being a virgin because, okay? He, he, he I don't know. It's weird. But overall, like I said, he's just a nice guy. He has a great group of friends. And and much like everybody else on the planet, he is struggling to pay rent. So I feel like he would be humbled. And I feel like this world would just be a perfect place for him. If he's struggling to pay rent here as well? Yep. No, but uh, from what I know of the show, yeah, he would be a nice guy to hang out with. So I'll co sign onto that one. Yeah, I could have said so many other characters, but he's just such a sweetheart. But anyways, your next one. All right. So, I was trying to think of a good character for my last, or for this honorable mention. So I eventually uh, ended up selecting Krillin from Dragon Ball Z. He seems like the most normal out of the people that you would deal with. He's, especially in like, end of Z, beginning of Super, he's just there. He's, but he'd still be a great, like, gym partner, help get strong, teach you key blasts and stuff like that. I just, I think Krillin, of all the Dragon Ball Z characters, he's oh, pretty much the most normal. I feel like Yamcha's pretty normal. He just Yamcha's too needy. I, I wouldn't necessarily agree. Here's the thing. I want to agree with Krillin, but ever since we've started this podcast, I've started to realize that the whole I can't blow up 18 thing just really stuck in my craw. Uh, and for and I don't think I'd let him live it down. It's like, yeah, but I married her. I'm like, yeah, that's your happiness, not mine. I don't care. Or, but in all seriousness, he is a very good friend. As long as he didn't throw rocks on any of us like he did to Goku once when he was sleeping in that one episode, I think I could find a way to live with it. Yeah, but again, if he and if he helped you train, that would also be awesome. Yeah, personally, I would rather I would have rather sit Piccolo, but that's that's my thing, not yours. But overall, I can co-sign. All right. So your next honorable mention. Okay. Hey, I'm gonna just keep this at one kid. Ca- uh, technically, this is two characters, but I'm just gonna say one because why not? Bruno from Yu-Gi-Oh! Five Ds. Okay. 
he is Bruno at first it's just a mechanic he's really brilliant but a little bit awkward at times but he's always willing to help his friends not to mention he's also a cyborg from the future or who can who, he, he, he's basically an android a cyborg or android whatever you call it from the future he's really good with technology he's brilliant and and he's and he knows how to push people to be better not to mention it'd be a dual not to mention with his technology he could get us all dual disc and dual runners and that would be pretty sweet i thought about say misaki and i talked about her from the video game but i just figured this is technically for, from anime stuff so i said bruno plus bruno just seems easier to talk to i love misaki but she's a little scary sometimes again I've no, i haven't gotten this far into 5ds before so i don't know about him so i'll just kind of co-sign on to him it sounds like he's is he kind of um how to put it like a, i don't know i was trying to think of a character from an earlier series that it sounds like he is but there's not really a good example as it sounds like not not really no no but but like it like which i guess that's why that kind of makes him unique but overall i i just i just enjoyed bruno i thought he was cool so he, he'd, be, he'd make a good friend to have yeah, it sounds like him. Again, I know it's a, a few of these have said it like we're greedy, like, hey, they can bring us stuff, but it's not just that. It's we're trying to go based on their personalities a lot of this. Yeah, I feel like I've been very humble with my list so far. Yeah. Let's see. So, my last one is one that I think both of us would get along very well with. I swear to God, if this is who I think it is, I'm going to reach through the screen. Umakage Hokoyami from My Hero Academia. <laughs> and I agree. We've talked about him. This is like the one character that I've been able to get Alex to really like. If there's a if there's a single episode of My Hero Academia that Alex will watch, it's going to be the episode that is centers around uh Tokoyami. I mean, to be fair, I don't know how much you personally got me into him, but at the same that being said, though, I can give you a point on that. I know very little about him. I don't know. I don't. I completely forgot whatever his first or last name, whichever one. I just think it's. I just know he's Tokoyami. He's a bird guy. He he said he has the best cat. One of the best cat races in anime. And and apparently he's. I, I don't know a whole lot about. I don't know a whole lot about him. I was going to say he shipped with everybody in the show, but I'm like, wait, that's Deku. Never mind. In all honesty, he would make a good friend. Um while he has the kind of goth personality of or that he puts on the outside he is a very caring friend like and is very intelligent he there's um an episode in season two that he's he saves the day pretty much for during the sports festival and uh allows his entire team to move forward to continue in the tournament so what's his power exactly what's his stand besides being the bird like form he also has a he can control his own shadow and give it physical form so he can use it to attack at uh distances uh later on he learns how to fly using it and stuff like that so it feels like that should be the most overpowered thing in the show but considering how little i hear about the guy that that might be that might be hurtful he's up there in strength like it wouldn't surprise me if they do like a time skip at the end or something if they if everybody keeps their powers he'll be in the top 10 heroes at whatever if they do a time skip to say hey look this is where everybody ended up i will hold you to that and if it doesn't happen i'm getting kenshiro on the phone to break into your house okay anyway but yeah i get i guess i have to go son and you son of a you did that you did that specifically so i'd have to agree with a my hero thing you suck for that. I'm going to keep that in the back of my head. But overall, my last honorable mention? Go right ahead. Tomoko Kuroki from Watamote. Okay. She is a shy, introverted person. And so I feel like I do the best in like bring her out of her shell. But at the same time, she loves anime. She loves video games. She loves sweets and junk food. But she's also incredibly cynical and hates people. That's perfect. That's perfect. I love when people admit... I hate other human beings because I'm going to be honest, guys, human beings are kind of overrated. They're like three good ones. 
Hunts, John Cena, Dolly Parton, William Zabka, everybody else is kind of a question mark. But overall, like, she's a cynical person, but at the same time, it's not overly, it's not too much. It, it's based on, you can kind of understand why, but she's a nice per she can be a nice person. I feel like we would all bring her out of her shell a bit. And I just, I just, she just, she needs friends. She needs friends. Now, if you go off the manga, she's doing great. But based on the anime, she just needs a friend. Yeah, she's... I, I understand social anxiety and all that. So I can understand struggling to make friends. And, but yeah, trying to be her friend would be a big deal. And it would help her out. And again, she can always bring like, her love of anime and video games and stuff to the uh, relationship as well, because it's always nice to have someone else's opinion on stuff. Yeah, yeah. The one, but she's got an honorable mention because at one point she's kind of she can the cynicism can get kind of much sometimes, and also, oh, it's hard. It's hard being friends with somebody with that much social anxiety. Also, just for part of me questions is because if I'm one of the few guy friends she has. Is she going to get a crush on me? Not that I have much to offer in that department anyway. Hey, but I would just be like, oh, that's going to be something to work out. But overall, Tomoko, she's cool. Well, and I, I just like to think we'd be friends. Yeah, I can, I can see that. I can also see you trying to get her to replace me on this podcast. I might end up doing, no, no, it's going to be me and Tokoyami. <laughs> so what's uh, the next, so what's the next character on your list? Revelry in the Dark. Perfect, perfect. Though to me, you have to admit he would bo he would boost our subscribers. I'd be like, huh, Tokoyami's on this episode, okay. But then again, I could say that for almost anybody on our list so far. Yeah, if we, if we actually had either the voice actors or the real pe these as real people, then yes. Let's just <laughs> let's just say I'd rather have cosplayers because some some anime some anime people like I've said before, there are some voice actors out there who are not amazing human beings by any stretch of the imagination unlike tomoko who was awesome all right so now on to our final ones all right i'm glad we haven't had any crossovers lately that's good yeah so this is the one that i think this one's really like we would both 100 percent sign up if this person was uh going to be a roommate with us okay brock from pokemon Yep, yep, one thousand percent cosign. Yeah, so he's already used to taking care of people, whether that be all his siblings when his parents ditched them, or Ash and Misty, or well, remember, Ash and May Max, or well, Ash and Dawn. Well, remember in the first episode he was in, they said, "Oh, Brock's mom passed away," and we're like, "Uh, okay." And then, like several episodes later, we're like, "Oh, hey, mom, how's it going?" So I think they just left. I think they literally just abandoned him at some point. That is sad. Well, no, she faked her own death and uh, to get away from the kids and her husband. Good God. Oh, good God. <laughs> no, but in all honesty, Brock is such a nice guy. And if, you, if he becomes like a friend or roommate or whatever in the Pokemon world, all the better. Because, I mean, just with his knowledge of Pokemon, he would, especially if you're just starting out, he'd be able to teach you so much. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel like Brock is one of those characters, so I feel like if you don't like Brock, something is, like, who hurt you? Something is very wrong. He's a nice guy, he's very smart, or he, his dry sense of humor is kind of amazing. The only thing that would make things kind of difficult is his flirting. Like, I feel like we might have the problem on our hands with that. He'd probably end up being his wingman and actually getting him a date. You, you can you can go you can go for that man. I'm just gonna be sitting on. I won't pull his ear or anything, but I'll just be like, oh, this should be good. But even though I wouldn't have to, because if you recall, every now and then there is a girl that actually does reciprocate his feelings, or just a girl who's like seven and likes him, which he he doesn't reciprocate for very obvious reasons. But we would have to tell him to temper it because some of his reactions could get him like pepper sprayed or tased or something like that. That is very true. He fit into our group just fine. Yeah, but well, yeah, but plus, it, plus, <laughs> if I'm if I'm ever late to work or something like that, or I just don't feel like being a traffic guy, I'd be like, "Hey, man, can I borrow Steelix? All right, cool, <laughs> cool." I just ride into work on a giant, rock, a giant steel and rock snake, and everyone's like, "Where'd you get that?" I'm like, "Don't worry about it." 
Don't worry about it. Yeah. So he again, he's he's like the perfect roommate because he's or good friend that you could have because I mean just his personality is amazing. He, I mean, he's like the first person to seems to even trust like Team Rocket when they try to help out and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, not to mention we would ne- it, we wouldn't have to deal with the rain anymore because he could turn his frying pan into a drying pan. But all, but we're also forgetting the biggest thing about Brock: jelly donuts, jelly donuts. Which, if he made jelly donuts, I'd be okay with that. But if he made uh, rice balls as well, that would be fine just as much. Yeah, but uh, but they would be jelly donuts in the form of rice balls. Which would be amazing. Yeah, I, I, I had thought about making those for the channel, or just the, the channel, the group in general, whatever. ever. So, but I can, obviously, I can go sign on to that. All right. So what's your last one? My last one. I'm noticing I have a lot more women on my list than you do. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I had one and ended up changing it a little bit uh, when I thought of, some, of one of them, so. Uh, anyways, my last character... Sakamoto. Okay. In all, like, look, look, I could do my usual stick for Sakamoto, be drooling over him and ruining my laptop. I was saying, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, like buying body pillows and stuff like that. And all the weird stuff I generally say for Sakamoto. But in all seriousness, is he is a cool guy who, I know you have, you never finished the show. Oh, and because you said it wasn't really for you. But in all seriousness, Every episode, he's seemingly doing his best to improve people. He's never condescending about it. it he's, all, he's improving the bullies' lives. Like, the bullies are becoming nicer people. The teachers are getting better at their jobs. There's a girl who, had, who admitted that she, to him that she had a crush on him, and he let her down incredibly gently to the point of it didn't even feel like it was a rejection. But, that, but the, the thing is, like I said, he's always trying his best to help people. But I feel like he handles everything so well that he could be a very inspirational friend, whether he's trying to do it or not. Uh, but it, he's just a cool guy to have around. I don't know how long term it would last because we would be getting mobbed by, by women and some men included for trying to hang out with Sakamoto and date him and everything. But he's just a cool guy. And I don't know anybody who doesn't like Sakamoto, which once again, if you don't, it's okay. You're allowed to be wrong. It's cool. No, I can co-sign on to that. And yeah, especially from what I remember of the first, I think we saw the first three episodes together. He's, Something like that. Yeah, he very much is in his, uh, while he is perfect, pretty much, I guess the description, he's always, he's not trying to show up everybody else around him. He is trying to help them reach a better level of themselves. So I could understand him wanting to be or you wanting to be his friend yeah but he's also not like super pushy about it because there are times to- there are, there are going to be times when we're working out with some of these characters where it's just like hey come on you can do it you can do it but no i can't back off i want to go i want to go home i want to go home but sakamoto would be kind of shows sometimes you're allowed to give up it's all right and like he just finds ways of motivating you without being super cringe or overbearing about it so Sakamoto, he's just cool, and I kept all the horny comments about him to myself, so I feel like that itself is an accomplishment. He's already making me better. Yes, that is an accomplishment, because I think the last time we ended up having to stop filming for a while. Yeah, yeah. I, for, <laughs> it's Sakamoto, Sakamoto's great. No, but yeah, based on his personality, I, I can 100% co sign on to that. All right. Anything else, or are we ready to go to sleep? I think we're ready to go to sleep. All right. So, ladies, gentlemen, and others, what fr- what anime characters do you think would make the best group of friends? Hence, any characters we didn't talk about, any characters who on our list who were like, mm, I don't agree with that, or just anybody in general. Well, because anime is weird. But and don't just list oh, because I could get powers and things. Like, I'll talk about their personalities too. See what we can come up with. Exactly. I mean, that's what most of these people are. That they're very friendly or would just fit our group dynamic perfectly in my opinion so that's kind of why i select the ones i did so yeah if you have any like and yeah give us reasons why you select certain people for your lists 
Yeah, and I, I, I'm proud of myself because I could have thought of some Pokemon characters. I'm like, no, nope, not, 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 not them, not them. It's, it's not worth it. But so Brock was the perfect answer for you. So join us next time when we, we are joined by Brock, Sanji, Tomoko, and Shield. Hopefully, ho hopefully these people show up. I, I don't know if they will. And be on the lookout because we might do a follow up as just the characters who just we hate. We not necessarily we hate them, but, but just. I don't want to be friends with this person because it could be a mess. Not exactly hate, it's more of we just okay, nice to meet you. Okay, I'm going away now. Yeah, and I would I would just I wouldn't even express that. I would just actually say it to them. But that's just my thing. And hopefully these characters would want to be our friends, but like I said, I'm not holding my breath. But if you wanna be key friends of the show, like, comment, subscribe. Maybe give us a rating on the podcast app, but who knows what that. And we will see you next time. This has been Alex. And Richard. And you've been listening to the anime Egotists. Good night and peace easy.